for my idea. There's so much hot a human being can take. Girl, it's just friends that you know have. I did not kill anybody. Who you are is your identity. I get Papa will go give me. I can't even say quarter life crisis. I'm not yet 25. Let it die. Send that. Let it go. I said what I said. The dramatic was a person. <laughs> welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is grace and on this channel i talk about my weight loss my lifestyle and my faith on today's episode i'm going to be telling you guys 12 lessons 2021 taught me but before i get started don't forget to like share keep your comments down below smash that subscribe button if you have not and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos 2021 was a year <laughs> I mean that in any way you can think of. It was a year that taught me a lot of things, made me grow. It was a year that I felt some emotions very strongly. I overcame so many obstacles. It was a year of healing. I experienced healing in several areas of my life. But that being said, 2021 was an amazing year. It had its ups and downs, but despite all of that, God was faithful. And thank you so much guys for rocking with me in 2021. So let's get started. The first lesson 2021 taught me is God does not waste pain or failure. God is not wasteful. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Grace. I'm a Christian. So something I talk about on this channel has to do with God because God is the center of my life. So now that you know that, I realized that there were so many areas in my life in 2021 that needed help. I struggled a lot. It came from a place of pain, hardship, struggles, with time. Those things that were like struggles that were so tough for me, God eventually used it for something amazing. That means God uses your current situations to deliver you. I would like to say I found God in adversity. Coming out of that and realizing that God took me through the refining process, such a beautiful story. What the enemy planned to bury you. God will use it to bless you. Letting go of dead weight. A lot of people are walking around with dead weight on their shoulder. A lot of baggage. So you don't realize that why you're not moving forward in life is because of that dead weight you're carrying around. That dead friendship, dead relationship, dead business, dead partnership. That thing that you're trying to resuscitate. That thing you're trying to give life to that is already dead. Struggling to give it life. It is dead weight. Let it go. If you're watching this video and you're struggling to let that thing go, this is a sign for you to let it go. That relationship, that friendship, let it go. If it's not pushing you forward, let it go. Period. Don't hold on to your former self. I'm not the same person I was in 2020. I'm evolving every single day. I can't hold on to the version of 2021 me. I can't hold on to those ideologies I learned growing up. Those ones that I realized they are wrong. Pa pa pa. Foul. It's time for you to pack your load and let it go. Let it die. And do not entertain your former self. It's just like you bought a new house. You have moved your things to your new house. Still living there three weeks in. But every day when you come back from work, instead of you to take the road from your workplace to that your new house, you take the road to your old house. Why? What are you doing there? Then you not find a way from that old house back to your new house. It doesn't make sense. Stop going back there. You don't live there anymore. Drop those ideologies. It's pulling you down. It's a dead weight. I really, really came to understand this letting go of dead weight 2021 because I realized that there's some things I let go of and I felt so much peace afterwards. I was like, ah, all these things that I've just been bothered about that had no meaning. It was just a time waster and I'm really glad that I learned this lesson and you should. You can never change a person. If you watched my 2020 lesson video, I said the same thing. This is something I've learned over the years, but I will still repeat it. I think I will repeat it every single year because it's such a profound lesson. Every single day you go around, you see people struggling with somebody with the idea of I can change them. Something's not working, things are not going fine. You have this mentality that, especially ladies, no shade, especially in relationships, you're like, oh, I'll change this guy. I'm the one God I've sent. Send that. You're not being working yourself. You're going to go and um, change somebody. You can't change anybody. As a matter of fact, it's impossible to change somebody. That person is struggling to change himself. You see people say, I'm going to lose weight. They say that thing. Two years ago, they are, they are struggling to do those things by themselves. Then you think that you can now carry yourself and change another man be. Make it make sense. You cannot change anybody. You are not the Holy Spirit. I said what I said. I said what I said. 
the dramatic was expressing. <laughs> People resort to violence when they are intimidated or scared of you. Not necessarily physical violence. It could be violence in any form. It could even be toxicity, like manipulations and everything. Let me explain. I'll, I'll actually tell you my story. I had this friend that was very shady, very deceptive. But for a long time, I did not see this friend for what the person was, what the person truly was. I used to always blame myself for issues. And it got to a point where I was really confused, like, what's going on? The Spirit taught me this lesson. The thing about being deceived is that the person being deceived does not know they are being deceived. The deceivers are good, like, good at their craft. But the first question I was asking was, why did this person do this? I thought we were friends. I mean, people are wicked. People are evil in this world. You want to go and ask them why they are evil. I was just curious because friends don't do this to their friends, right? I'm a very curious person. I really wanted to know why. What did I do? But the Holy Spirit told me that this person actually hurts me this way not because of anything i did but because of the selfishness of the person's heart at some point i realized that this friend of mine was actually intimidated by my success and i was someone that used to confide in this friend i was sharing all my insecurities with you but you are intimidated by my success the extent of hurting me make it make sense the result to inflicting pain on you when they feel intimidated or scared of you, it might sound very vague, right? If they feel intimidated by you, that means they feel that you are beyond them or you are above them. And the next level is to try to like cheap your success or try to bring you down. They have different ways of doing that and violence is one of them. People treat you badly based on who they are, not who you are. Contentment is key. Late last year, I was having a, I can't even say quarter life crisis, I'm not yet 25. <laughs> I was having a mini life crisis and I was asking myself so many questions. I'm at a stage in my life where I don't allow little, little things to bother me. If I can't control the outcome, if I can't control the circumstance surrounding a particular thing, I let it go. God brought me to a point where I started questioning myself. The things I used to worry about, I don't worry about them no more. It's not as if I have every single one of the things i worried about in the past but i'm not too bothered about it why why is that like, i'm relaxed something like that and i started to feel bad about it and then i asked god i came back to god and i'm like god i don't have these things yet but i'm not really bothered because i kept it at the center of your feet these things i need i want these things make my life better but because i've asked you i have hope that i will get these things at the right time and i'm not worried about it and holy spirit spoke to me and said it's called contentment you're not worried about this thing because now you trust me. It's a new height when you get to that point where you're not worried because you know that God has your back. So contentment is very important. When I got to that point, I'm like, little, little things don't faze me. Some guys that I've met, some guys that I meet, they will promise some enticing things. And obviously, they're lying. They're lying and they just want to get something else in return. We know what they want to get. We shall not mention it. I don't have those things, so and it sounds enticing, but because I'm content. I get Papa will go give me. I'm like, no, thank you. I'm very, very quick to not accept those enticing, dangerous, demonic offers. I get the gist. So contentment is very important. If you lack contentment in certain areas of your life, you find yourself pursuing things that you have no need pursuing. When you know who you are, you demand respect accordingly. My brother, my sister, y'all are out here settling for less because you don't know who you are. People are out here settling for trash because they do not know who they are. Who are you? Who you are is not your name, title, it's not where you're from, it's not your nationality, it's not your age. Who you are is your identity. I don't know about you, but my identity is in Christ. I am a child of God. That's who I am. And because I know who I am now, I do not settle for things that are less than what Christ wants for me. Okay? And I really wish that for everybody. I really wish that you truly discover yourself. You truly discover who you really are. You come to understand your identity. So you flourish, okay? It's such a beautiful concept because I realized when I was younger, I used to settle for things, positions, people, friends, relationships, different things that I used to settle for the bare minimum. I mean, I go all the way when I'm helping somebody to do something. But when, I, when I'm when i doing something for myself, I just accept the bare minimum. That's not happening again in 2022. Because I know who I am, I demand respect accordingly. You can't talk to me anyhow. You know who my father is? 
importance of friendships and interactions so if you have been following my channel for a while you could have realized that i'm a very friendly person but i do not have many friends you don't see anybody in my videos and yes I do not have too many friends there's nothing wrong with friends having friends like it's very beautiful but not everybody has them like me 2021 taught me the importance of friendships i've always thought that it's good to have friends and everything but even as i thought that i did not have so many friends because of so many reasons i will not mention but 21 i really realized the the beauty of friendships and there was something that i overcame in 2021 it was god that helped me overcome that thing but he used somebody use somebody to help me overcome that thing and i began to realize that there's actually beauty in, in human interaction <laughs> that sounds very weird i'm not ashamed to say i've been a loner for the longest time i've been a loner i've been someone that's always boxed in one corner this year 22 that's going to change i don't know if i can just flip from being a loner all of a sudden to a socialite but i know that things are definitely changing around here I never ever thought that I'm better than other people. I just was not very outgoing. I'm just a reserved person. That's how I want to put it. And it's just friends that I did not have. I did not kill anybody. But I'm saying to you right now that having friends is a good thing. And people have had bad experiences with friends. So people are very skeptical about who they meet. Yes, as being one of them. I've been hot several times in the past. When I say hot, like literally hot 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 like there's so much hot a human being can take and you you withdraw and withdraw into your shell until you, you're not a shadow of yourself but god being so good i'm not a shadow of myself but i just don't have many friends and the importance of friendship is key i just finished recording like two minutes for a video and it did not record anyways the next lesson 2021 taught me is if someone goes to you respect the dead and move on so i'll tell you my story from that of this video, you already know that someone goes tell me. Okay. It's embarrassing because the person that goes tell me watches my channel sometimes. So you probably see this video, but it's okay. It's all good. <laughs> so this was early 2021. We have been friends for a while. For a while. The friendship was off and on. There were times where we did not speak for a long period of time. And then all of a sudden we just reconnect, vibe, just you know, enjoy our company. And after a while, maybe we we'll fall out. Not fall out like have issues, but we just lose contact and we don't speak for a certain period of time. Do that friendships like that and life just happens and nobody's at fault nobody's to blame so that's how our friendship was we were not very close but we used to have moments of should i say bouts of energy you know how a young child just very energetic in the morning and finally they fall asleep and wake up at night and be disturbing everybody that's how our friendship was we lost contact obviously i think 2020 i can't remember exactly so when we connected this year everything was dandy vibe check it was nice we we're conversing for a while enjoying each other's company it was just natural very natural very beautiful i remember one of my friends telling me that oh she likes the vibe me and this is my male friend has we could talk about the silliest of things random things it was very very nice then one day this guy told me that he came out in one conversation i can't remember exactly how but Isha came out. He told me that he had cut feelings for me. We both knew that we could not be in a relationship, right? I did not want to make it awkward because I had been in similar situations. I mean, in the past, I had a male friend that did not reciprocate my feelings. And I know how he felt awkward and everything. Now, on the flip side, I don't want to make it awkward, you know. So I was very chill about it. Because I'm friends for a long time and suddenly one person catches feelings. How do you react? He just tried to be as who as possible and it was working and it wasn't as if he even told me about his feelings because we knew that a relationship couldn't work distance and i did not feel the same way i did not outwardly throw it in his face but i made it known like i didn't want to lead you on and all that sort of stuff well, i don't know why people are talking about this anyways yeah that happened we were still vibing as friends and everything you know how when someone tells you they like you, you start to notice differences. Like you just see them differently. Like someone tells you they have feelings for you or they feel a certain way about you. You just see them slightly different. So I started noticing little things about him and girl, he started looking very mm, <laughs> in my eyes. And I just started liking him automatically. Like he said little by little. Uh, you know what? How girls are when they, when they like somebody. And these things, we don't even know we're doing it, but it's happening. So I don't know if he noticed it, but I was acting differently. I was just acting softer or something because obviously I liked him. But I would try my best to hide it. But at that point in time, we were very, very close because he told me so many stuff. And we could talk about anything. So it was awkward for me. I mean, the fact that I now liked him. And somehow, somehow, it came up in the conversation. But you know what is funny? Immediately, I 
talked about my feelings for him. Because this was like months in between. Him. It was not a very stretched period of time. It was also not very short. So let's say roughly two months. And several weeks in between when he told me. And when it came up in a conversation that I liked him. And the next thing is that my guy decided to pack his lo- luggage and up. Just up out of my life. <laughs> he said, I can't do this. <laughs> When you go to somebody, you don't you don't give them notice, you don't say anything. We went from talking few times a week. That's that's how close we are. Adult relationships, people that talk few times a week. You know how busy people are. And someone spending that time in their day and talking, talking to you three times a week. Three times just average. Sometimes it was less, sometimes it was more. So we went from talking at least three times a week to once in two weeks. He used to message me, I used to message him back and forth when we were normal. When we were chill, when everything was fine. But when Talk about my face. Obviously, we, we knew not to go to work, but I just wanted to be out there because was, everything was strange to me. <gasps> oh, my dear. He stopped picking my calls, replying my messages, and when he replies, come up with one funny excuse. I was worried. I was thinking something was up with him. My mind did not even go there, Seth, because me, I knew that nothing worked last so I was not thinking of anything. I just wanted to tell, let him know because we were that chill with each other. He said, behaving strangely. And then the funny thing is that he ghosted me, but he didn't ghost me properly because. I would do my research. He <laughs> ghosted me on one platform. On other platforms, he was active. You could see him taking pictures, doing videos. And I actually thought something was wrong with him, like maybe his phone's fault or something, but he was actually going places, doing a lot of fun stuff. And I'm not just making assumptions. I really don't care about whether I was posting on another platform, but it just showed that there was really nothing wrong with him and all those excuses were false. See, today, if you ask me why did you think it was me, I don't know. I don't have any reason. It's just still funny to me, but me, I shall know that he's dead to me because he ghosted me. What did I say? If somebody ghosts you, respect the dead and move on. The living people don't used to ghost people. It's only dead people. If you're watching this video, <laughs> I'm not that petty. That certain relationships have come out of not romantic relationships. I mean, with friends, like with my fellow girls, with guys, with romantic relationships. Like certain relationships have come out of, and I never see myself going back. No matter what, ghosting is just one of the ways they are doing this thing. People are you doing a lot of horrible, horrible things out there. You did you tell me a certain way in the past. You best believe that nothing's gonna work. I don't send you again. Your matter don't cast. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm going to be sharing more stories or things I've experienced dating, relationship, friendships, betrayal, all this kind of thing. Hopefully, expect more story times. This so one was embarrassing. It was embarrassing, but we mean you. <laughs> Human beings are opinionated opinionated <laughs> human beings have opinions it's not as if i don't know that but you can't control what people say or do but you can control how you react to what they do or say you can also control wh- what you accept people will say whatever they feel like like everybody always have an opinion you know the saying that you are entitled to your opinion yes everybody has one I, I heard this thing, I can't remember where exactly, I think it was Adela that said it, she's a YouTuber. Opinions are like fat, like everybody has one, so it's a very normal thing for you to fat, so next one being close to you fat, to so every single person fat, and so if opinions are like fat, obviously everybody will have one. So don't be too quick to react to what the next person is saying, because it's just their opinion. Some persons can be really sensitive. It boils down to a lot of things that we cannot go into right now, but if someone says this thing, let me give it for example, I'm a YouTuber and people comment on my videos. If I get, for example, 100 comments this week and 90 comments are good things, it must not be good things, but it should not be bad. And then 10 comments are bad comments. So I'm going to focus on those 90, I will sit down and I will think about those 10 comments and I will think about why they said it and I will narrow down to that because they said it, maybe there's an aspect of truth in it and I will break down that aspect of truth and I will narrow it down to I can't know more. Jeez, I think that that mentality should not be carried into 2022. If you are somebody that everything someone says you take it to heart, I think it's something you should work on because people are going to talk. If you do what they say you should do, they will still talk. If you do what um, they like, they will still talk, you know? You cannot um, sit down and try to please everybody. People are opinionated. The importance of outsourcing or delegating. Let me tell you, you are not the only one that can do that thing, you know? <laughs> So I'm someone that's very, very, highly, highly, very, very independent. I always want to do stuff on my own because I'm like, if I'm not the one doing it, the person will not do it better. I don't know who taught me that mindset. I don't know. 
it comes from a place of wanting to control every situation in your life which is not necessarily a very good um, trait that I have I always want to be the forerunner of whatever thing I'm doing I always want to be in control of situations in my life which you can't control everything and that's another important lesson at some point in 2021 I, I said I'm a teacher right I have a blog I outsourced something to somebody and while I was struggling with that thing for six months the person literally dissolved that thing in less than an hour I'm, since I've struggled with it for six months right or, or more than that I don't even know I was thinking that we would, we would do several trials before it would work but it worked on the first trial I mean, if I had sourced that thing a long time ago, I could have moved ahead, you know, after being further in life. So it boils down to the idea of wanting to control every single thing in my life, and which is not nice, like I said. So the importance of outsourcing, that thing that you think that only you know, other people would not be them. So don't try to do everything on your own. Try to involve others. Try to involve learned people, not just anybody. Someone that you think, you know, could do that thing and do it really well. Without impact, you are just a spectator at whatever you do. When you go and watch football, you are a spectator. You are just cheering. You're not the person playing, so you're just a spectator. You're just watching, right? In a typical situation, let's say the football pitch or the stadium is live, and you're sitting behind the pitch, you're cheering. You're sitting there and you're watching life pass you by. So people are spectators in their own life. You need to become the main character. <laughs> I don't know why this sounds so funny. You need to become the main character of your life. If you're doing whatever you're doing and you're not creating impact, you're not giving value, you're just a spectator. So whatever you're doing, ensure that you're giving value. Wherever you find yourself, there is this saying, whatever is what doing, is what doing well. Don't just do anything just for doing sake. Leave a mark. Let somebody come and see that you passed through this institution, you passed through this place, and there was something different after you left. Let them feel your absence. Let them feel your presence and let them feel your absence. So wherever you find yourself at a job, serving in local community, in your relationships, different aspects of life, try to do better. Try to do more. Improve on yourself. Create value. Give value. One word I really resonate with. Impact. If you're not giving impact, you are a spectator of whatever you do. So... That's basically all the lessons in 2021 taught me. They were a lot, but some of them I had to just scrap them off and squeeze 365 days of 2021 into these 13 lessons for you guys. And I hope these lessons are blessings to you. And that's a wrap. Your likes and your comments really support this channel. Makes YouTube algorithm push my videos. So please ensure to like, share this video, keep your comments down in the comment section. Hit that subscribe button if you have not and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos and i'll see you in the next one guys bye guys